So surface anatomy of the foot, starting with the, the skeletal anatomy, so here we've got a right foot. What you can do is find the medial malleolus first, and then if you travel directly inferiorly from the malleolus, what you will hit, it doesn't stick out, it doesn't protrude, but what you will find is the sustentaculum tailor, directly inferior to the medial malleolus. Now if you move inferior to the sustentaculum tailor, you will hit muscle, so you can go past it, find the soft bits, and then come back up, and the first thing you'll hit as you come up will be the sustentaculum tailor. Then anterior to that, there will be a big bump. That's the navicular tuberosity. So what you can then do is put your middle finger on the sustentaculum, your index finger will fall on the navicular tuberosity. Then you switch your ring finger to the sustentaculum tailor, your middle finger falls on the navicular, your index finger then falls on the medial cuneiform. Now it's often pretty flat because you sometimes can feel a little groove where the navicular and the cuneiform, cuneiform join, but not always. So there'll be a flat bony surface there. Then you get your little finger, you put that on the sustentaculum, your ring finger now falls on the navicular, your middle finger falls on the medial cuneiform, your index finger falls on the base of the first metatarsal. Now, that again is pretty flat. Sometimes there is a bit of a bump there that you can feel where the first metatarsal starts, but the trick to it is you move your finger superiorly. On the superior aspect of the base of the first metatarsal, there's usually a very palpable bump. And then you can go, oh, there it is. Make sure you find it there and then come back down. So you can find those four structures there on the medial surface of the foot. And that gives you all of those ones. Then on the lateral surface, what we're looking for here is firstly from the lateral malleolus, more or less straight down, is the fibula trochlear. And that's that bump there that the fibularis longus and brevis tendons are either side of. Now on some people it's really palpable, on some people it's visible. On some people it's very flat and you just can't feel a thing. So just be aware of that. You may or may not find a big bump. There is a great one on this plastic model, but there's not always in real life. Then what you do is find the calcaneal tuberosity. Now the calcaneal tuberosity is this whole big bump at the back of the calcaneus. It's top and bottom and the back. And then you come along the, the lateral border of the foot. Now this will all be soft because there's a, the ab, ductor ditch time minimum muscle there. And then when you hit something hard, you know you think this tuberosity, or some people call it a styloid process, at the base of the fifth metatarsal. Now it sticks out a long way on a skeleton, but on a real foot, it will be a, a fairly flat surface here, but you will feel that it goes soft, 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 hard. Oh, that's it there. So, and if you take off the toes, it's about halfway along the foot, okay, from the, from the head of the metatarsal to the calcaneal tuberosity, it's about halfway. So not too hard to find. So that's what we can find in terms of skeletal anatomy. Let's just have a look then. If we come up to the talopural joint, so we find again the medial malleolus, and then if we just work our way across here, we should first hit tibialis anterior, the tendon, and we should be able to follow that down to where it attaches to the cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal, and you've just found those, so that should be easy enough to follow that to where it goes. Then the next one will be extensor hallucis longus, and then extensor digitorum longus, which here at the talopural joint would be one tendon that then splits into four. Then, lateral to that, we'll find fibularis tertius, assuming that the person has one. Only about 4% of people don't though, so chances are you'll find it. But, it's usually only palpable just here. Okay, so proximally. It's usually only palpable fairly proximally here, because it actually fans out quite a lot before it attaches to the fifth metatarsal, usually. Then we come over to the lateral malleolus. Superior to the malleolus, we should be able to feel fibularis longus tendon. Inferior to it, we should be able to feel fibularis brevis. So that's where those ones are palpable there. It's rare, you can see fibularis longus here, but it's rare to be able to palpate it very well, inferior to the malleolus. You might, but it's not always very easy. And then lastly, the plantar aponeurosis is, oh sorry, second last, the plantar aponeurosis is, is overlying, it's not on this model, but it overlies the flexor digitorum brevis, so that's exactly where it's going to be. It's narrower here towards the heel, and it fans out, becomes broader as it gets towards the metatarsal heads. 
uh, we may be able to feel that one. It's not always that easy to feel. And then lastly, on the lateral surface of the dorsum of the foot here, we have extensor, digitor and brevis. So we're going to find that muscle belly just there. And of course, all the tendons and muscle bellies are much easier to find if you get the person to activate that muscle. And that's that.